Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be looking on the Egyptian path to prosperity and development. Now according to the African Development Bank, it had a report that forecasted Egypt's GDP to grow to become 4.8% for the year 2023-2024 compared to 44 percent for the current fiscal year. So we will be looking at the prospects and the opportunities for such an increase in the GDP. But before we start doing that, let's check out some of the main stories making the news today. And we'll start off with President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi who held talks with the visiting Sudanese army chief Abdel Fattah al-Burhan in Adamain city today. Presidential spokesman Ahmed Fahmi said that during the talks, President al-Sisi stressed on the significance of enhancing ties with Sudan on the official and public stages. The head of state described Cairo's stance towards Sudan as solid and reaffirmed Egypt's firm position in standing by Sudan and supporting its security, stability and territorial integrity. For his part, General Burhan said ties between the two sides are highly valued, praising the Egyptian enhancement to preserve the security and stability of Sudan. The meeting tackled the latest developments in Sudan and efforts to settle the crisis to keep the unity and sovereignty of the country. The talks also focused on the outcome of the Sudan neighbors meeting with Al-Burhan welcoming it. Bilateral ties and coordination of aid for the Sudanese people, especially with regards to humanitarian assistance, also topped the agenda of the meeting. Burhan, in his first trip abroad since fighting began with paramilitaries in April, was accompanied by Intelligence Chief Ahmed Ibrahim Mufaddal and Interim Foreign Minister Adi Sadiq. Iradit Gil, or a will of a generation party, said on Tuesday that all its members and MPs had expressed full support to President Sisi in the upcoming presidential elections. It said its support stems from a desire to achieve the aspirations of the Egyptian people and continue with the development path. It said its stance reflects its aim for facing challenges to Egyptians and support for continuing peace and security through the solidarity of the people and the armed forces, the police, the judiciary and the media. These were a couple of the stories making the news today, but now uh, focusing on tonight's topic regarding the, uh, the forecast of the increase of the GDP for the fiscal year 2023-2024, reaching 4.8% as opposed to 4.4% of the current 2023-2022-2023 fiscal year. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. Egypt's uh, GDP growth is expected to increase to 4.8% in fiscal year 2023-2024, up from 4.4% uh, in the current fiscal year, according to the African Economic Outlook 2023. The report said the government's IPO program estimated at uh, $40 billion is set to enable the private sector to grow. However, the report warned that Egypt's reliance on large external financing is still constituting a substantial risk. The AFGP report estimated that Egypt's average inflation for the next fiscal year at 14%, down from 20% for the full fiscal year 2022-2023. As a result of high food and non-food prices and devaluation of the Egyptian pound against the U.S. dollar, the report expected inflation to ease in most African countries in 2004 due to the impact of tight monetary policies. Egypt's annual headline inflation dropped to 31.5 percent in April, down from 33.9 percent in March. According to the report, Egypt's current account deficit will reach 3 percent in fiscal year 2023-2024, setting its expected budget deficit at 5.4 percent for the same period. Egypt's government has increased its budget estimate to 6.9 percent of the GDP for fiscal year 2023 
2024. For the current fiscal year, the report estimated that the budget deficit and current account deficit at 6% and 3.5% respectively. According to draft of Egypt's general budget for fiscal year 2023-2024, the deficit is expected to reach 848.8 billion Egyptian pounds. Moreover, the current account deficit fell by 77.2% to around $1.8 billion during the first quarter of the current fiscal year. The AFGP report that financing needed for Egypt to adequately respond to climate change is estimated at $19.75 billion a year. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by Engineer Mustafa Nageri, the Deputy Chairman of the Egyptian Exporters Association and Head of the Agricultural Committee of the Egyptian Businessmen Association. Engineer Nageri, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Hani, for uh, being uh, here once again with you. It's Always a pleasure, a pleasure sir. Me. Thank you. Uh, sir, now, this annual, I mean, the report by the African Development Bank forecasts the Egyptian GDP to increase for the fiscal year 2023-24 to 4.8% compared to 4.4% of the current fiscal year. Now, considering all the economic difficulties the, the whole world is facing, including Egypt and the inflation, the devaluation of the uh, Egyptian pound, the liberalization uh, of the currency, how is this possible? How is this feasible that we would actually increase our GDP by 0.4% for the next year? Uh, as you know that everybody is focusing for Africa uh, for at least the last 10 or 20 years. And Egypt um, was a little bit late to uh, refresh 
uh, its achievement which have been done in Africa since 60s and 70s, early 70s. Uh, but I can tell that according to the agreements which Egypt have been holding with the Africans, uh, starting from the Comesa, starting uh, with the SADAC, mm -hmm. is, which is the Middle and South uh, uh, Africa, and lately the continent free trade agreement, which is going to uh, 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 consist of about 53 African countries. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Egypt being a base for the investment and uh, being a, a, a having a, a major experience and long-standing experience in construction in uh, uh, um, in fields of uh, medicare in fields of electricity uh, projects mechanical projects is always on the top of the countries which can uh, um, uh, have a big achievement in these agreements mm -hmm. so that's why uh, african bank is very active at the time being since the last month we have been in meetings uh, through several entities in Egypt, either the Federation of uh, Chamber of Commerce or the Federation of the Egyptian Industries, or even uh, with Expolink, the Egyptian Exporters Association, and they are always attracting Egyptian investors and the Egyptian traders to uh, proceed and to work through several uh, uh, finance initiatives and intensives. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, the studies which have been done lately is always promising for Egyptians to proceed more and more uh, in uh, in Africa. Yes. Yeah. Well, what which sectors would be the the sort of driving force or the locomotives for? increasing this GDP? I mean, are we talking about certain sectors such as agriculture or energy or maybe uh, small and medium enterprises with really uh, all the development that is taking place within the Decent Life Initiative, for instance, having all the startups? Um, I mean, which sector or which sectors would be the driving force for, for reaching this increase in GDP? Uh, as usual, uh, um, you know, Africa needs a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, the major projects for Africa is diverted either for the power or for the uh, uh, mechanical uh, industries. And it comes for the, for the agriculture on, on the second step that it sh there should be a sort of uh, uh, merging between uh, countries which have faced a lot of uh, uh, problems due to the uh, uh, crisis, the, mm -hmm. uh, the crisis which have been facing everybody in, in the last two, three years. Yes. So we have seen that Africa is a major uh, importer of wheat and there was a big problem of wheat as well for Egypt, but Egypt is trying to cover and close the gap between demand and supply at the time being, mm -hmm. which will be talking about it maybe uh, uh, lately, but in general, there is uh, mainly Africa is a spot for the solar energy and everybody is focusing in Africa for big projects for the solar. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it will be a, a center of the business in the coming 10 years for the solar energy, for sure. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of projects which is, is going for uh, recycling water and diverting uh, new canals and the channels for the water because there is a big waste also in water in Africa and this should be used to produce more and more food as we have mentioned before that by 2050 we are going to be the global uh, population will be 9 billion and we need all to increase the productivity of each unit of the land mm -hmm. and Africa have the land and have the water but it needs a lot of projects to try to allocate the direct direction for the uh, agri people to come and to produce yes yeah in Julian Nageri, now we always keep referring to the global challenges and the crises and uh, we've been talking about the Russian-Ukrainian crisis as maybe uh, a reason why a lot of the uh, 
a lot of the economic difficulties the whole world is facing, especially Africa and Egypt as well. But have we developed some sort of a strategy or a mechanism to deal with such a crisis in a way that, I mean, it is probably going to be there for the foreseeable future. So we just need to deal with it as a reality and maybe try and have some sort of a mechanism that would overcome it and get on with it without being a, a reason or uh, an excuse really to, to, to hang on our difficulties. In the, uh, if we talk about the food safety in general, as a keyword for uh, the problem which uh, everybody is is focusing on so we have seen that the reactions always come very fast according to any crisis mm -hmm. which is economical crisis or war or or even natural disasters or yes. something like that so the changes start dramatically and the jump in prices is uh, uh, is increasing very fast yes. and this happened already according to the corona one time mm -hmm. but it was declining once again and then it came the Russian war to Ukraine and the prices have doubled maybe in the main uh, uh, strategic crops which everybody in the global need wheat or corn or soya or even fertilizers which is affecting beef and uh, poultry but at the end we we always have uh, to realize that always you have to uh, uh, change your supply uh, origins mm -hmm. you have always to do that and egypt was always trying to increase and widening the supply of the origin for uh, several items so that's why we can see that there is increase in the prices, but always there is sufficiency, and we have never faced any lack of any of the strategic commodity whatsoever. And we are on the other side, we are trying to increase the sufficiency level of the major strategic food for the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So we you have to work in, in two parallel, increase mm -hmm. your productivity, uh, while you have the climate change which is yes. an obstacle but also you have always to widen that's why when we say that some of the countries have been uh, 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 damaged and the, the, the supply chain was totally cut off uh, but on the other side other countries like India like Australia uh, uh, like France they have uh, benefited a lot mm -hmm. according to the uh, uh, russian ukrainian war and they have really seen a bumper uh, trade uh, uh, agreements and at the end they are back to shrink india stopped mm -hmm. in, uh, exporting uh, uh, rice or had some barriers to export white rice and uh, they are also having export tax for other items in edible oil or in other so the always the reflection is very fast and you have always to be ready that's mm -hmm. why when the minister of uh, food supply two days ago he was saying that the changes which is happening might be good might be bad mm -hmm. okay yeah. and that's why we always ask that the government should have uh, uh, a sufficient stock of the major uh, uh, food for the Egyptian at the time being yes. even for rice because uh, his excellency mentioned that he was he will not go and have a stock of rice which mm -hmm. I think it is it is not um, good we should always have uh, according to the changes which has happened changes will always be there mm -hmm. no matter what it yes. is but we have always to be ready and we know that there is a food basket it is uh, containing uh, several items we cannot say that rice is okay so no problem no but rice is affected by wheat by corn by uh, uh, all the carbohydrate food mm -hmm. so you have always if you have something you have to con to be stable with the stock to try to uh, mitigate any uh, price uh, uh, increases which might happen mm -hmm. okay at the time being so I can tell that uh, we have seen that according to the 
a, a new uh, um, net supply net or chain that the prices have decreased mm -hmm. although the, the war is still there and there is of course a withdrawal of Russia from the uh, uh, the safe uh, uh, um, uh, track for the grains but the prices are decreasing because the production is always decreasing and all the countries are thinking to try to cover their needs mm -hmm. so we are satisfied at the moment f according to the sufficient stocks of the most the major items we can say that Egypt is is well safe mm -hmm. at least for the coming six seven months yes well so doesn't that beg the the necessity to speed up the African trade, uh, free, uh, free trade agreement to be actually implemented? I mean, if we don't have to rely on exporting or having uh, having to deal with a lot of the international community, the West or Asia or yeah. uh, or Europe, shouldn't we be really keen on implementing the free trade agreement as soon as possible? Egypt is one of the key players in Africa as usual. Mm -hmm. Similar to South Africa, similar to Nigeria, similar to Kenya, to Morocco. There is some countries which is, is really having uh, 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 a good impact in this agreement. And I think that the agreement is little bit late but at least there is more than 49 countries have signed the, their parliaments have signed to go mm -hmm. to this agreement some countries does not as usual like to go at once they like to have a periods or to have uh, like uh, 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 in incentives if we can say to go in several uh, fields mm -hmm. but at the end they will go all together because uh, uh, Africa is a, a country of uh, challenges and uh, 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 chances, as yes. we say. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, there is big improvement in several countries in, in Africa, which we really uh, are appreciating uh, what they are doing. But at the end, uh, there is still a lot to be done. The, we are uh, pressing a lot. Egypt is, is trying to accelerate the uh, implementation of this agreement there is some issues about the certifications about the standards which i think that at the end it will be solved there is a lot of protocols yes. is is done and egypt is trying according to their historical uh, uh, experience in such agreement and to deal with the agreements and with different uh, parties i think egypt is playing a big role in this and i hope within one or two years the free trade agreement in Africa will be done and we can see that uh, exchanges uh, of commodities and the movement even between the people themselves mm -hmm. uh, will be faster. Yes. Well, Engineer Nagari, Egypt set itself a target of reaching hundred billion dollars worth of exports. Uh, that's maybe over a year now how well, uh, I mean, how would you assess our performance in terms of reaching such a target? Is it feasible? Is it hard? Is, are we far off from reaching such, uh, such a figure? I mean, you're the deputy chairman of the uh, Egyptian Exporters Association, so you probably have more of an insight on the exporting sort of activities of Egypt. Well, uh, yesterday I... Uh I was joining a meeting with a committee which is trying to uh, uh, advocate or, or, or the, the exports and try to increase the value of the exports and try to come to some points. Mm -hmm. And we were talking, each of us, on uh, each sector. I was representing Exapolink for that meeting and uh, being one of the agriculture sectors. So mm -hmm. I was focusing that the, this sector is increasing a lot, the exports are increasing a lot in the uh, mean of volumes. Mm -hmm. Okay, but on the other side, uh, we have to say that about 65% of all our agri-exports is uh, citrus, potatoes and onions. Mm -hmm. And the three items is in the in the in the low strip 
of the prices. Mm -hmm. So the average of the prices in general of these three is not more than about $425. So if you say that 60 or 70 percent of your exports in the agriculture sector is with average unit export price of 425, this is very low. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the other 30 is percent is doing fine with the strawberry, with just the grapes, with this uh, green beans, uh, different types of vegetables and uh, uh, fruits. Uh, they are balancing this average to come to $600. <coughs> if I compare Spain or Italy mm -hmm. or Turkey, their average unit of export for the uh, fruits and vegetables is more than 1,000 euro or 1,000 mm dollar. -hmm. So at the end, that this is something which you have to focus and we have to work. So how we can uh, try to move a little bit further to the items with, hi with a high value. Mm -hmm. So this was a discussion yesterday and we have taken uh, some um, uh, good decisions about that. On the other side, this big sector of the SMEs, mm -hmm. okay, government is trying to help them. Yes. But they are trying to help them individually and they will always be SMEs. So we, our advice to them was to try to join the small companies to work in a bigger uh, entity or a bigger company. So their competitiveness will increase and their cost will decrease. Mm -hmm. On the other side, they will be a part of the, of the export society. Mm -hmm. So we always say that, uh, that the, the, the bumper power of Egypt is in the SMEs, in all, the, uh, all sectors, in industry, in agriculture, in every, all the sectors, in services even. So if you try to gather the small in bigger clusters, I am sure that the productivity will be better, the quality mm -hmm. will be better, uh, the standards will be better, and at the end the price and the, and, the, in, and the economy at the end will be better. It would definitely facilitate things, but would there be a fear of actually losing the independence sort of factor for the SMEs and the startups uh, if they're all being under one sort of an umbrella or yeah. uh, institutionalized, mm -hmm. do you think that then it would lose one of its key factors, which the independence of the business itself? No, nobody is looking for independence in the business. Mm -hmm. They are looking at the end of the added value. And if you always, we always participate in, in several fairs and the exhibitions everywhere. 50% of the exhibitors are organizations or, uh, um, uh, as we say, uh, cooperations or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and really this is a better way that to try to gather the SMEs because you, you, it is very difficult to try to uh, get a small a, a exporter, he will not be exporter. If, the, mm -hmm. if he's small, he prefers to sell in the local market. And this is, was mentioned yesterday. Mm -hmm. They say this is a big headache to go and to try to open markets and so and so and so because it costs a lot. Mm -hmm. So, but at the end, if you gather them, the cost will be less because it will be divided. And if you need to make a code for a small farm, it costs uh, uh, considerable yes. money. Mm -hmm. But if you can gather 10 farms or 12 farms to work as one unit and you, they will have one quote mm -hmm. and at the end it will be the cost will be less and their competitiveness will increase. Yes. And this is, we are always trying to find the best solutions which uh, have been done every, in, in Europe or in the US. Mm -hmm. I mean always the land is still a big land. Uh, mm -hmm. Although the, the, the landlord uh, died and maybe second or third generation are coming and, and several owners, but mm -hmm. they don't uh, divide the land. Yes. You have to work as a big one unit. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there is another interesting forecast that actually predicts that Egypt will be the seventh largest economy in the world 
before the year 2075. Now China will be the first, India will be the second, Egypt will surpass European economies. This uh, is a report by the US investment bank Goldman Sachs. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. The U.S. investment bank Goldman Sachs uh, predicted that China will become the largest global economy before 2075, with an estimated GDP of $57 trillion, while India will surpass the United States to become the second pole in the global economy with a gross domestic product of $52.5 trillion, surpassing the United States, which will come in third place with total output of $51.5 trillion. According to the report, the Egyptian economy will rise to seventh place in the world ahead of all European economies with a GDP exceeding $10 trillion, while Indonesia, Nigeria and Pakistan will be ranked fourth to sixth in the global ranking, provided that Germany, the largest European economy, remains in ninth place in the world behind Brazil. Egypt maintained reasonable macroeconomic growth levels until relatively recently, even against the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic despite their microeconomic concerns. In more recent years, however, the economy on both the macro and microeconomic levels has been facing tremendous difficulty. Egypt has established fiscal targets for the upcoming 2023-2024 fiscal year, which take into consideration the mounting challenges in the state's economic landscape, including a review of the International Monetary Fund program, an expansion of investment programs, and deepening financial gap. Considering ongoing challenges, the government is navigating a course of reforms by effectuating the stipulations enshrined in the International Monetary Fund program with a specific emphasis on stabilizing the exchange rate and improving financial governance by implementing strict expenditure control measures rather than relying solely on revenue generations. Additionally, the government may have to reduce import expenditure by replacing imported goods with domestic products, thus increasing export value, preserving currency reserves, and reducing external borrowing. The IMF is expected to conduct its first and second reviews of Egyptian economy for $3 million four-year loan program between September and December 2023. Egypt has been increasing its efforts to fulfill its commitments to the IMF under the Extended Fund Facility Loan Program approved in December 2022. Egypt's economy exhibited some strengths in July 2023, particularly the growth in net foreign reserves, deposits in foreign currency and foreign direct investments, in addition to the improvement in the PMI, indicating a potential recovery in local demand. Economists believe BRICS membership will give Egypt a chance to ease pressure on the dollar. President Afet Sisi said Egypt was looking forward to cooperating and coordinating with BRICS members and with other countries invited to join the bloc to achieve its goals toward strengthening economic cooperation among them and raise the voice of Global South. The BRICS bloc has a development bank which provides soft loans for its members to carry out development and infrastructure projects. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with Engineer Nagari. Now, everybody's been making a big deal uh, of Egypt being invited to join uh, the BRICS uh, as of January next year. A lot of people were very excited. A lot of people 